Before the video begins, I'd like to thank the people listed on the screen right now for supporting me on Patreon. Welcome to Let's Play NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup Part 187. And I did that test drive for the Cup team at Michigan. Endured the ticking sounds. And well, um, this is an offer that I'm not actually going to refuse because it's a three-star team. And that's what I wanted. So, you know what? Let's sign this contract. And let's do some cup racing. And now we have to wait for the game to simulate the results of the previous races. That's fine. Still early in the season, so. And also my uh now my fan my fan cap is no longer 5 million, so now I can earn more fans again. So that's all cool and shit. So with that, we're going to do our two qualifying sessions here because we're going to Bristol for now our next two segments. Starting with the Bush Race, Sharpie Professional 250. So I'll see you, yeah. EA Sports welcomes you to the Bristol Motor Speedway for the running of today's Sharpie Professional 250. At the start of today's race, nearly half of this track's half-mile surface will be taken up by these NASCAR Bush Series race cars. With track space at a minimum here at Bristol, we're sure to see some aggressive driving and our fair share of flared tempers. Here at Bristol, alliances can become grudges and heroes can drop to zeros in an instant. So what soap opera does Bristol have in store for us today? We won't have to wait long to find out. The command to start engines is just moments away. Oh yeah, time to race at Bristol. Yes, I know. I intentionally fucked up the autograph session. I suck. <laughs> Nerds. Um, anyways, poll. Easy. Lap one. Five out of five in bush poles. Hooray. So away we go. 62 laps of Bristol, and I did not get a good launch because I launched in the wrong gear. But, looks like I'm barely going to get the advantage over Horn today as we enter turn three. Give up the bottom. Don't do that. Alright, and lead lap one. Now, can I hold on? Well, okay. Can I hold on to the lead? Okay, can I do not that? Just go very wide. Oh. Looks like. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't know what the hell I just did, but. Uh, I think I, uh, kind of. adjusted my steering a little bit there, and the car just decided to understeer forever. That was pretty bad. Also, the line I'm taking in the turn one is not helping either. Let's go in the apron. That's a good idea, right? It's just, you know, a fairly steep banking uh, transition as well as transition from concrete to asphalt. You know, no big deal. It's fine. Meanwhile, I'm pulling away. So, uh, there's that. So, just another typical bush race in this season. Hooray. Ah. Also, that last lap compared to my best. Nice. 0 .001 apart. Once again, me fast boy. Me very fast boy. NASCAR Heat 8 is going to be amazing. I don't know. I thought NASCAR Heat 3 was really good. I have a feeling next year's game is going to even be even better. At least it should be, you know. refine the uh, refine the career a little bit make the kind of team owner aspects a little more in depth because you can just kind of easily once you figure it out it's really easy to just maintain so there's that maybe make it a little more complex next year or something Anyways, 2.6 second advantage after 11 laps. Hooray. Second half of this race is going to be fun with me dealing with all of the traffic. 
the new TXR game. I'm now saddened because there was a new TXR game recently, but it was a mobile game and it got shut down because it did it was not successful. So we might not see ever a new TXR game to be to be honest. Yeah, it was shut down within a year of its release, so I, I think TXR is dead. Like absolutely dead. No, it was like an actual Genki TXR. I mean, if someone could make like a successor, that would be awesome. Like an indie dev make a TXR successor. You know, like how we have stuff like uh, Horizon Chase, which is a successor to Top Gear. And shit like that. Yeah, potentially fan made TXR. Like I said, I, I think a good, uh, you know. Spiritual successor would be pretty, would work. We just gotta, you know, have the people and the team and the motivation that to want to do it, and also the money to, you know, afford actually doing all this. Someone buy all the intellectual property. Revamp a street supremacy would be awesome. The only thing that SS lacked was, you know, the actual free roaming, but, yeah. Like a modern TXR, but with the, you know, the Street Supremacy, uh, being able to, like, take over or start your own team and shit. You know what? Fuck it, Mike. Let's, let's just, let's just make our own spiritual successor. We can totally do that. We know how to make video games right. <laughs> Right? Game was too easy. It was pretty easy. Like, I mean, I fucking, like... I breezed pretty much through a new game and, like, a playthrough and then new game plus. And only, like, a probably less than ten hours. PGR sequel or successor. I mean, Drive Club is kind of like that. It's more like rural, rural PGR, but... It was kind of like that. Horizon 4 is confirmed like that ain't happening. Oh yeah, that one track in Edinburgh, which is the same as one of those PGR2 tracks. I don't have enough experience with PGR2 despite playing through the game. I don't remember PGR2 well enough to know the similarities. The game gets meta as fuck, uh oh. Thing, uh, EA doing things, that's the problem. I don't want EA to do anything right now with any franchises, especially beloved ones. Like, I do not want 2018 EA to revive any beloved franchises, because you know they'll make a mockery out of it. Because monetization... Because, you know... Like, I think like Yong Ye says, EA's true, uh, like, basically fan base to them is their investors and not the actual players. The players are just, you know, there to make them money. They don't care otherwise. Yeah, we do have that, you know, look at Command and Conquer. They revived that and made it into a shitty mobile game. Exactly, laddie. Again, like, they don't care. It's like, because FIFA is like their biggest, 
like means of profit. As long as they make bukus of money off of FIFA, they don't care. <laughs> I think there's also a mobile game that makes them a lot of money as well, but I don't remember what it is. Alright, see you later, Sam. Oh, hey, we're halfway through the race. Probably think about pitting. Yeah, I know. I don't want to hate EA, but they're making it easy to. With all their shady business practices. Again, they care about their, you know, investors not the players. Also, I'm pitting now. I don't really have time to change the setup, so I'm just not going to bother. No, not No Limits. It's not a. It's not Need for Speed. It's some kind of a... I think it, like an a RPG or dungeon crawler or something that's like heavily monetized and is also making them quite a bit of money. Not as much as FIFA, I don't think, but still. It's like one of their top uh, prof top profiting games. It was mentioned by, I think, someone like Yong Yeah. I watch a lot of Yong Yeah. <laughs> so I almost lost control, clicked my left stick, turned off the mirror, go me. He kind of went in depth with it in one of his videos about, like, their big cash cows. Ultimate Team is a mobile game. Talking about FIFA Ultimate Team. It's some kind of mobile game that used to be like another well like loved and established IP that they decided to uh, turn into a shitty mo uh, fucking cash grab mobile game that somehow is grabbing them a lot of cash. Dungeon Keeper, I think that's what it is. I think that's exactly what it is. Fair though. I don't know. At least from what I've seen and heard, it's making them enough money. Or it's making them money. Oh, what is happening up here? It's only got very sideways. Angry Joe did a video on it. I don't watch Angry Joe, but yeah. Anyways, pit stops cycling through. I'm now stuck with the back markers. So, I've got to be very careful here with these last 21 laps. Or 22 laps. And I don't even have that much of a gap either. So, I can't really just fuck around. I kind of will have to pass these guys. To have a less than two second lead. Oh, the point is EA is shit. I wish they weren't, but they are. And I don't want them to ruin it, any other franchises that... Honestly, I, I would rather... Like, I would rather that they just, like, keep uh, the other franchises lying dormant instead of ruining them. That's just me. There's Biffle, please. Thank you, Biffle. Thank you, Biff. You sneak underneath the orange. The orange. Cool and good. Is this guy gonna give me room? This guy's gonna give me room. Alright, cool. So, the rest of your dormant franchises. Yeah, the thing is, they won't. Like, I'm sure once they figure out, hmm, how can we make money off of this? By, you know, using nostalgia goggles, they, they'll strike. They'll strike that iron a lot. Again, Command and Conquer. Look at it. That lied dormant for a while, and then they realized, hey, hmm, we could probably make money off of this through nostalgia. Let's do it. 
Oh god, that Harry Potter game. I think I know which one you're talking about, Harry. Oh, hey. Isn't that the one where you like you actually have to watch your avatar get strangled? Unless you pay up or wait until your, you know, your ability to do stuff in the game uh like resets or re Recharges, that's the word I'm thinking of. It's a six minute game. Breaking the game, of course. Put sh There you go, all clear. Yeah, that yeah, that was awful. That's 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 really shitty. This is one reason why I just can't get into mobile gaming. It's not just because I you know, I don't have the device, which I don't have a device that can, you know, especially support modern games. It just doesn't have enough power and also memory. Like, there's just too many games with shady practices. Like, like almost every mobile game is, you know, pay to play. Free to download, pay to play. Y yeah. Like, I just don't find any fun. Like, the only mobile game I can find fun in is Duel Link, because I don't even play it on mobile. That's just because it helps scratch my Yu-Gi-Oh itch. Yeah, free to pay. Again, free to download, pay to play. Four laps to go. By the way, I've been driving around Bristol this whole time. I know I haven't been talking about it at all. That's what happens when you get distracted by discussion, I guess. I mean, there's not much happening in this race. I've just been, you know, dominating as I've been doing in every single bush race so far tonight. go. I'll just chill here behind. I think that's Hermie in front of me. Zero two. Get into the Bristol Night Race. Do nice. That's awesome. And around the final turn and another very easy win. Five for five. Hornaday second. Kyle Busch third. Kenseth Jr. The top five. Nice. Pretty cool moves, oh god. Alright, well, that was a very uneventful race. But got the job done, got the dollar, and got the trophy. So, uh, yeah, awesome. But there are the results of the race, and everyone finished. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so, for the fifth time in a row, victory lane in the Bush series, and also, since I don't have that f fan cap anymore, I made a lot of fans. Yeah! Awesome. Actually, you know what? Since I haven't checked it since Daytona, let's see how merch is doing. Probably charge more. Darn his hands. Hot. Hot. Charge more. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna increase the diecast price to 15 bucks. 15 whole da. Yeah. So, here are the updated, that's the cup point standings, here are the updated bush point standings, with my lead now 161 over Matt Kenseth. Kyle's back in third. 
And I'm still at maximum points. So hooray. And once again, five poles out of five races. Still not quite, still not the perfect perfect, absolutely perfect season like I got into modifieds. But perfect season and a new trophy. Nice. So with that, that'll conclude this segment. So next time we're going to make our season debut in the Cup Series with my three-star Cup car and hopefully do well. Considering it's Bristol, I probably will actually do fairly well. Stay tuned for that. Thank you.